experimental yield and percentage yield. So basically what this is, is during chemical reactions that we carry out in a lab, we have a theoretical yield. And what that is, it's basically the products that we expect to obtain. So in theory, in a perfect world, what do I expect to obtain if I run this reaction? So we have a theoretical yield that we start with. So we think we're going to get 50 grams of, I don't know, sodium hydroxide. But then we actually do the experiment and we actually weigh out the product. And we get 25 grams. Okay, not 30. Then we can work out the percentage yield. So I actually got 25. I was supposed to get 30, or theoretically I should have gotten 30, according to the chemistry. So 25 divided by 30 multiplied by 100, I've got an 83.33% yield, which is actually really good. Um, in labs, we might not always get such a high per um, percentage yield. Why would we get less than what we expect? If I do the chemistry and I expect to get 30 grams, why would I get anything less? Well, there's various reasons. Sometimes the reaction might actually not finish. It might not run to completion. Or maybe there might be impurities in the sample. So what impurities are, it's basically, it differs um, from the chemical composition of the compound. So sodium hydroxide, it won't be sodium hydroxide, it'll be something else. So impurities. Okay, I'm sure you guys understand what that is. So this is our formula to work out percentage yield. And then I'm going to do example one with you guys. So if you want to write down the question, you may do so. It says an excess of lead nitrate reacts with 0 0.75 grams of potassium, what is that, iodide, according to the following reaction. And they give you a balanced reaction. Always check if the reaction is balanced, because if it's not, stoichiometry won't work until you balance it. After filtration and drying, a mass of 0 0.583 grams of lead iodide is measured. So this one. Determine the percentage yield. Okay, so basically what they're giving you is the actual yield. So they're saying after we complete the experiment, they filter and dry it, and this is what we actually got. So some dude in the lab, he went ahead and did the reaction, then he dried and filtered that stuff, and he weighed it. Um, on the scale, and he, he was like, okay, I got 0 0.583. That's the actual yield. So I'm going to write that there so long. I'm almost there. If you look at the formula for percentage yield, the question asked, calculate percentage yield. I need actual yield divided by theoretical yield times 100 to give me a percentage, obviously. So I've got actual, but now how do I find theoretical yield? Now, remember what I told you. Theoretical yield is what the chemistry says should happen. How much product I should obtain. So we're looking specifically at this product. Okay, I'm just underlining. So the actual yield of that product is this. Now we're going to find the theoretical yield. So basically theoretical yield is just found by doing chemistry as per usual. Okay. So let's see again what the question gives me. It says an excess of lead nitrate reacts with 0 0.75 grams of potassium iodide. So this mass is 0 0.75 grams. So we know that this information is given. I need to work out the theoretical yield of this. So basically, I'm looking for the mass of this, theoretically. OK, so stoichiometry, let's go. How do I get from having the mass of this to getting the mass of this? Remember, all roads lead to mole. You need to convert this mass to moles. Then we use the mole ratio. Then we get the moles of this guy. And then when we have the moles, we can work backwards to get the mass. So basically, remember that little diagram I showed you. We go from mass to working out the moles. Then we use the mole ratio. Then we have the moles of the second thing. And then back to mass. So we go from the mass of Ki to the moles of Ki, then we use the mole ratio to get the moles of this, and then we can eventually get the mass. You need to do this properly. You can't just go from mass to mass. So let's do this. How do I get the moles of potassium iodide? So I'm going to say moles of potassium iodide is equal to little m over big M. Why do I choose this formula? Because I'm given mass. So why would I use anything else? 
the mass of this compound is 0 0.75. That's what I started the reaction with. And now I need to just find molar mass. So I'm going to need the atomic mass number of potassium, the atomic mass number of iodine. So this is where I go to my periodic table. Potassium, potassium, 39, and I, 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 127. So 39 plus 127. So to work out the moles, oh, I hate it when it gives it, gives it to me like this, but it's okay. Because this is an intermediate calculation, we're going to go like this. 4.51807, so at least to five decimal places, times 10 to the negative 3 mole. Your calculator may not have given it to you in scientific notation. I think I've set mine so that it does. If it gave it to you like 0 0.004518, then that's fine. Just make sure you leave it to enough decimal places. Okay, so they gave me the mass of this, so I worked out the moles of this. Next step is to use the mole ratio because I need to get to this guy over here. So I started with Ki. I'm trying to get the moles of PBI2. This is a balanced equation, so I know that I can go ahead. The mole ratio is 2 to 1. Remember, you use your balancing things to tell you what the mole ratio would be. So 2 to 1. Therefore, that means that for every 2 moles of potassium iodide, that reacts 1 mole of lead iodide is formed. So how do I get from 2 to 1? I divide by 2 or times by a half. Same thing. So a half whatever the moles of this would be. So therefore, the moles of PBI2 will be half of whatever this one's moles are. I hope that's making sense to you guys. There's lots of different ways to work with ratios. If you want, you could go I to PBI2 and you could go 2 to 1. So if this one is 4.51807 times 10 to the negative 3, then what is this one? And you can work out your ratio however you want. So what do I need to do to get from 2 to 1? I must divide by 2, which means that I need to divide this one by 2. Or however you were taught ratios in grade 8 or 9 or whatever makes sense for you. Dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by half. So I'm just going to do it like this. So 2.2... 59035 times 10 to the negative 3. Yeah, I'm not rounding off because I'm mid sum. I'm in the middle of a sum. So that means I have that many moles of PBI2. Now I have moles. So I'm kind of over here. I had the mass, converted it to moles. Then I used the mole ratio and I worked up moles of this. But I don't want moles. I need to find out the mass because that will give me the theoretical yield. So how do you go now to convert from moles to mass? You use this formula. So I've got the moles. It's 2.259035 times 10 to the negative 3. Mass is what I'm trying to find. Molar mass. Now I just have to do the calculation. It's lead and it's I2. So let's look at my periodic table. So I've got... 461 as my molar mass. So 207 plus 127 plus 127. So that just gives me 461. Then I multiply that by that. And I get mass is equal to 1.04 grams. Now, I went through all that effort to get the mass of PBI2. That mass that I worked out, this, is the theoretical yield in grams. Doing the chemistry, it's what the chemical equations and what stoichiometry says I should be getting at the end of my reaction. So, I'm um, shame, poor, poor scientist, he goes into the lab thinking he's going to make 1.04 grams because that's what his chemistry books told him. But in reality, because life happens, and things go wrong, and whatever, whatever, maybe he spilled some stuff, I don't know, he only gets 0 
he expected 1.04, he only got 0 0.583. So what is my percentage yield? So I said I actually got 0 0.583. Theoretically, I should have gotten 1.04. You times that by 100. Let's work that out. 56.06%. Shame. All that effort, and basically just a little bit more than half of what you expected, is what you actually obtained.